What's up, nephew? What you got going on? Hey, man, what you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a rapper. Ah, oh, no. Nah. You want to be a what? You want to be a rapper? Bro, okay. But it's a lot that go into being a rapper, man. It ain't just, you know, like what everybody see on, on, like on TV and everything. I don't really want to rap no more. Fade down no more. This big cat flip. Show at the show. Uh -huh. Sometimes I get dope and I light up my dodo. But mostly just favors, no paper, just promo. Yeah. Always hit a sign that deal, nigga YOLO. Mm -hmm. Shit got real, gave me chills, Minnesota. But we stayed in the field, had kids stay local. Took a step back, now I'm trying to be a mogul. I don't want them fake daps or them fake hooks. No. Too many fake thugs taking fake drugs. Oh. Middle of the mall at Jerry. They the scum that influence your children. Uh -huh. Flashing guns, but don't have no insurance. Throwing uh -huh. warns, watch this pass interference. Cause you owe the plug, boy, you ban in the city. But let you rap it, you the man in the city. Uh -huh. Yeah, sign good, but it ain't legit. Dripping in the I can't pay the rent. Capping while you Snapchatting, bro, but where the paper went? At least get some streams start making sense. You paid to perform at the main event, but the venue was empty. That's money spent, and I don't give a damn if you take offense. We started off with a dream and some raps. Thought mixing and mingling, scene it was cap. Let the scene, not a whole team coming back. But this time I might just sing fuck rap. Cause y'all didn't water it down. Too many niggas with the same sound. Line just running y'all mouth. Do the most for the gram, looking like clowns. And it must be contagious. Cause it's going on in every town. I wanna rap no more. I don't believe I wanna rap no more, fade down no more. This big cat flip, bro. Don't rap no more. I don't really wanna rap no more, but I can't let it go. So I had to let you know I've been wanna rap no more. I don't really wanna rap no more, fade down no more. This big cat flip, bro. Don't wanna rap no more. I don't really wanna rap no more, but I can't let it go. So I had to let okay. you know I've been. Time. I had fans saying line after line Made a few pennies, dollars and dimes If the money ain't right, bro, I gotta decline I gotta survive, put rappers to the side Better have you a job or a hell of a grind You gon' take a few L's before you ever get to shine Go hard, transform like Optimus Prime You might get signed, and don't get it twisted This lifestyle, it can be addictive It's the truth when all the real niggas listening And all the pretty women want your attention Did I forget to mention? Rappers don't have no pensions You better have some billboard hits Better have your stove like nips Better get a spot in Fix and flip. You can rap or you can do something different A doctor, a lawyer, a dentist It's endless, the sky's the limit As long as you never have to fake your image As long as you never have to play with no gimmicks Stay in your lane and not other folks' business You can be cautious, you don't gotta be friendly Get you some digits, you can rap till you 60 yeah. With those raps and the fake daps Fake handshakes, hooks, I ain't with that Seven and three-fourths, that's a big cap Might start goes right fuck rap Cause y'all didn't water it down Too many niggas with the same sound Line just running y'all mouth Do the most for the gram, looking like clowns And it must be contagious Cause it's going on in every town on a rap no more. I don't believe I wanna rap no more. Fade down no more. This big cat flip bro. Don't wanna rap no more. I don't believe I wanna rap no more. But I can't let it go. So I had to let you know I've been on a rap no more. I don't believe I wanna rap no more. Fade down no more. This big cat flip bro. Don't wanna rap no more. I don't believe I wanna rap no more. But I can't. So I had to let you know I don't wanna rap no more. So you still wanna be a rapper? I don't have to be a rapper. What else can I be? Yeah, you can be something bigger than that. You can be, you can be a CEO of a company, man. You can, you can, you can sign rappers. You can rap and sign rappers. You know, I ain't down talking rap. I love rapping. I ain't stopped rapping yet. But you know, I just want you to know that I come with a bunch of grind and dedication. So I suggest if you want to rap, man, you got to work hard every day, just like any other job.
Hey, y'all. <laughs> Welcome to the Rocky Road. That was Mac Undergravity. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't really want to rap no more. And welcome to the Rocky Road. This is a show that supports independent music artists, the professionals in this industry that support them, as well as speaking about the ups and the downs of this here music industry. And I have a very special guest here with me today. I have uh, Mac Undergravity. How are you today, bro? Hey. Hey, turn, up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up. Wonderful, Rocky. I'm, I'm just, uh, I just appreciate you having me on to, uh, to think that my story is interesting enough for you to want to talk to me for a while. I appreciate you. Man, so um, I have actually been following you for a minute. Um, mm -hmm. I like for you to, before we get into this song that I love so much, um. I like to t let you talk about yourself a little bit right here. Okay. Well, uh, I'm Mac, Mac, uh, M-A-C of the group Under Gravity. Um, I have a, a partner, which is Adam Baum. Uh, we've been, we've been, we, we've had an illustrious history in the Houston underground scene, I would say since about 2009 or 10 or something like that. And uh, ever since then, you know, we've we've been on the Complex magazine with the top ten uh, mixtape. Well, we've been on Drugs Inc. Uh, talking about syrup. And from, you know, we're from Houston, so that's what they want to hear all the time. Um, we, we've we've uh, got nominated a few times by the Houston Press as the uh, the best group. Um, we didn't we didn't did we didn't sold out shows from Warehouse Live to Fitzgeralds to House of Blues with Dante Higgins. Um, we did, we did, we, we, since 2012, we've done, um, paid shows with the South by Southwest. Um, uh, we, 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 we got our own clothing line, uh, we got our own studio, very self-sufficient, like, um, we're like, <laughs> it's, it's, it, I can go on and on, you know, but today we're talking about my, my new project. Uh, I basically did a project during the pandemic. It's my solo, which is some very, 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 very new to me and very scary as well, you know, because I didn't have my brother with me telling me, no, nah, I don't do that. No, nah, I don't do that. No, nah, I don't do that. So I'm, I, I, I basically just jumped off the deep end and just seen what, what, what could happen since, you know, everybody was so secluded for so, for so long. You know, I got the studio over here. I'm like, hey, man, I might as well just go ahead and, 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 and you know, bring out an album real quick, you know, since everybody's in the house and everybody needs something to do. And uh, we did we did pre-orders, sold out all the pre-orders. Um, you know, we basically trying to trying. To, uh, oh no, I fell. So we basically <laughs> trying to run our. Uh, <laughs> we basically trying to run our organization like a record label, like how a real record label would do. You know, with with release dates, album listening parties, stuff like that. We had a, we had a virtual listening party, and uh, through that. I got about 30 pre-orders, you know what I'm saying? So if you know my pre-orders, you'll know if people pre-order your stuff, then you're not coming out your pocket for nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's like artists. Hey, that's free game right there. Do pre-orders, man. If you got, if, even if you just got a fan base of 10, you know, just, just tell them, hey, I'm doing pre-orders. Uh, I'm, I'm selling this shirt and this t-shirt combo for $30. That's $300 that you didn't have at first to do whatever you need to do as far as your expenses. You know what I'm saying? That's free game. I'm not only a, a rapper, a business owner. I, I also have a degree in business administration. So I, I I basically went to school to learn how to do things that I'm doing now. I didn't I didn't go to uh to go work for Shell or anything like that. I wanted to always be an entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> what I did is, is I is I used my the knowledge that I had before, added it to the to the book knowledge, and hey man, I, I feel like it's a daily combination. You know what I'm saying? So um at the end of the day. I just want this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm upper thirties. I'm mid, mid thirties. Okay, so I just want to give the people that's my age some music to listen to without looking stupid and you know what I'm saying and sounding stupid, because a forty year old dancing to some twenty year old music, you know, they don't. They only do that because they have to. Because 
40 olds not making music no more. If you feel what I'm saying? Like if 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 you 40 and you've been rapping, you really you you almost out the door. And it's not the thing about being an artist is no age limitation on this. Rap is the only thing that gives you an age limitation. You know what I'm saying? Oh man, he's 40, he can't rap. Man, I know people that's 50 years old that are rap circles around 19 year olds. You know what I'm saying? K Reno, ESG, like ESG ain't 50, but K Reno is 50. You know what I'm saying? Like they can rap circles around 19 year olds. But you know, we also know that it's not always about rapping. You know what I'm saying? That's really the least what it's about nowadays. It's about looking good, shining, uh, lying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I just, I'm just trying to show my little fan base, like, hey man, I'm 30, I'm 30 something. I got kids, I got a wife, and I still rap and talk that good shit. You know what I'm saying? I still can talk about my life. Like I always told Dante Higgins, uh, I don't know if you know him, but he's one of the best lyricists in the city, hands down, hands down. But I, I, I kind of told him when he was, when he had started really taking rap serious. And you know, he was talking about syrup and weed and stuff that he didn't really do. But he was always around it, so it was okay. For, you know what I'm saying? He was okay for him to talk about it. I'm like, hey, why don't you talk about stuff that that you really do? You know what I'm saying? If you if you a square, talk about stuff that squares do, and I can guarantee you it's gonna be some more squares that like doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And lo and behold, he took that route and ain't looked back yet. You know what I'm saying? Literally one of the one of the top lyricists in Houston. You know what I'm saying? So if you ain't heard of him, uh, look, look him up as well. But I don't mean to ramble. You go ahead, Rocky. Yeah. I, I just, I'm, I'm a talk. I'm a talker. You, you got me on here to Yo, talk. Yo, that, that, hey, that <laughs> is wonderful because that makes my job so much easier for this episode. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so a lot of things that I heard there, how long have you been in this music industry as an independent artist or, you know, with your group? Well, the thing is, <clears throat> before we was undergraduate, we had different names. So we actually had been rapping since, I would say, second grade, elementary. Me and Adam was a group. Um, we, we did talent shows at the school. Like, we always, we, we never shied away from the crowd. Like, you know, back in elementary, they didn't have, but, like, one program. So it's five, 600 students in one, in one program. You know what I'm saying? So we do the, do the we was crisscrossing one time. Then we was, uh my boys, a uh, uh, kid and play one time, you know what I'm saying? Like that's what we, everybody that was two, a dark and a, and a, and a bright, that was me and Adam. Uh, then when uh, fifth grade came around, we did a, uh, our, my teacher was like pro black or whatever. So um, we did a black history program, man. When I tell you, I thought we was Tupac and Biggie or somebody the way that that, that school just acknowledged us and, and, and embraced us at that, situ at, at that time, you know what I'm saying? Also, my dad, he did uh, growing up. My dad is a singer as well. He he did uh, he does he does background for Yarboroughs and people, uh, dramatics. He went on tour with uh, Luther. He went on tour with uh, Janet Jackson. Actually, he was in Japan when my mama was having me. You know what I'm saying? So I might walk in the in the in the living room one day. It's a full band set up. You know what I'm saying? In in his earlier band, he had. Uh, What's, what's the girl name from In Vogue? Terry Ellis. Terry Ellis was in his group. You know what I'm saying? That was before In Vogue. You know what I'm saying? So you could just see see where I'm going as far as this this music being in my blood. You know what I'm saying? Like I would literally wake up out of my sleep and it's a guitar, it's a pianist, drums, the whole shebang in my in the middle of the floor. You know what I'm saying? My dad singing and everything. So it's it's really no way I could um, stray away from it. It's it's really no way that I could not be in music. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like I'll be in music forever. I might not rap forever, but I can almost guarantee that I'll be I'll be doing something pertaining to music for the rest of my life. Mm. Yeah. So that I guess you saying that you may not rap forever. Now we gotta talk about this song, right? Mm -hmm. First of all, this uh there were many hits that I heard on this. There were many, many of my favorite. She Crash. say many. Okay. She say many hits. Oh, many, wait. Okay. Ooh, but, man. but at the same time, this was a song that really made me pay attention the most because um, this is a constant story that I hear over yeah. and over and over again. 
and the fact that you rapped about it, I was like, wow. And you did good because you didn't even sound bitter. You just were. Yeah. <laughs> what it was, right? And we know yeah. that this independent music industry will make you bitter if, oh, yeah. if you know, it will make you bitter. Oh, but yeah. most definitely. But at the same time, um, tell me about this song. Like, what what made you say, you know what, I gotta get this out? Cause it was it was the only song where you were like, huh, all right, I, I don't wanna rap no more, but but it wasn't like you <laughs> you talking down on rap. You even said that at the end. You were like, you know, there's more to it than uh just rapping just wanting to be a creator most, most so, definitely tell me about how <clears> the <throat> idea came up for you okay well uh my producer his name is phil phil blackman jr his dad is also a, a great pianist in houston um actually his dad is the one that he discovered the group h town and he sold them to the record label that you know them from the nowadays you know what i'm saying so before H Town was H Town, my producer's dad had a group. Had a group. I forgot what they called itself, and he sold them to whatever company they wind up being with. You know what I'm saying? So I've been knowing Phil since about ninth grade. Uh, Jack Yates, uh, we graduated together. That's my boy. So um, he sent me a beat, and uh, this is this. We had we we've been kind of like on a hiatus with the rap because uh, we basically just trying to get. Some more rev, uh, some more streams of income coming in. So we kind of went going a, a little bit harder with the clothes, you know. So my boy sent me a beat, and whenever he sent me a beat, I'm like, okay, I, I got to rap. Whenever he sent me a beat, because that's that's because he do other things too. So once he once once he sit down and do a beat, I have to take notice. You know what I'm saying? So he, uh, I, I heard the beat, and uh, one of my main things that I like to do when I hear a beat. I go to my voice recorder and I just hum however I'm feeling to that beat. So the first thing, so the first thing I heard is a little, um, it's a little instrument. So I immediately just start humming. I don't really want to rap no more. So I, I held, I kept that, and it took me about two months to, like, like I told you before, it took me like two months to write this whole song. It was only two verses, but it was 24 bars a piece. So basically that's three, three, four verses, you know what I'm saying? So, but I, I wanted to do a song about my dis, I, I don't know if it's the right word, disdain for, for rap, but also show how conflicted I am because it's in my bones and I can't really leave it alone if I want. It's like, it's like a, it's like a cheating girlfriend that you just love so much. You know what I'm saying? That That's how I feel about rap. Like, well, not a cheating girlfriend, but you get the point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, if you, yeah. if you if you was my girlfriend and you cheating, I'm kicking your ass to the curb. But yeah, I'm saying, right. It's it's like a it's like a family member that that does no right for you, or does very little for you, but you still want to be around them. You know what I'm saying? Because I can't lie, rap 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 has done what I've needed it to do for me. You know what I'm saying? To this point. You know, like I said, we done South by Southwest every year since 2012. Actually got paid. Not just, hey, y'all come down to South by Southwest. We got something for you. Not that. I'm saying we got a check from the South by Southwest, South by Southwest since 2012. We've, we've, we've been doing that. We've been doing, we've actually put on our own shows. We, we you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's not like we just been part of something. Like, we have been the ones doing all of this ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So, you know more than anybody, man. Sometimes this shit can just kind of like, it can be too much for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, at, at, the, at the same time, I just had a baby. My baby is about 20 months. Uh, I just got married before that. Just got a house before that. You know what I'm saying? So as, with all of those three expenses, I don't have too many expenses for rap because I call it expense. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't even look at it as investment because I'm blind to it. I, I just... I just spend it on the expense, and if it come back, it come back. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about it. You know what I'm saying? So, with that song, basically, I, my, one of my nephews had been talking about he wanted to rap, and he's about seven. 
but all he see is CJ so cool. That's what they looking at right now. CJ so cool on the TV. He got all these mansions and all this and that. I'm like, bro, he's making YouTube money. I ain't never heard CJ cool. I ain't never heard his videos. None of that. I don't think he. I, I don't think he has fans over 18, which is nothing wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? Which is nothing wrong with it. But I'm just telling him, hey man, just because you see this guy, you don't know what he's doing behind the scenes. You don't even know if he owns any of this stuff that he's that he is showing and everything that he's portraying. You know, so all that stuff can be sponsored. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever, rented, whatever. Just like all the rest of these rappers, they renting and getting sponsors and everything else. So I'm just telling him, like, man, look, you have to work hard if you want to be a rapper. Not just a rapper, you have to work hard to be anything. But you definitely have to work hard to be a rapper if you if you want to shine because it's it's it's. I think you could probably get into the NBA quicker than you can get. You could be successful in the rap business. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how I feel about the rap business. I can't say that just for music in general because. People get on every day, you know what I'm saying? But as far as rap, pe people get on every day, but as, as soon as they come, as soon as they go, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to rap, you want to be here for a while. You want to, what is your legacy? What is, what are you trying to accomplish? And as for me being a rapper, I don't even like for people to call me a rapper because that's the lowest thing on my totem pole, you know what I'm saying? So, if per person say, yeah, man, but at the same time, do you call a person that only kills sometime a killer still? You feel what I'm saying? Like it's a, so I, I have to embrace that. So that's a, I, I'm saying all this because this is what I was juggling the, with, with that idea of that song. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I wanted to, I didn't want to sound bitter. I didn't want to sound like an old rap nigga, man, y'all little niggas, y'all niggas ain't doing what you're supposed to do and all that. Like I be him. I don't want to be Joe Button. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to be Joe Button. I wanted to be me. I wanted to embrace the youngsters and also let them know, like, hey, man, it's okay if you want to rap, but have something else going on while you're rapping or to get you to that step to where you're trying to be. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, it's not guaranteed. You can, you can like, it's, it's big, man, oh, I'm missing it. We just missing some money. Bro, I done seen so many dope niggas spend money on the radio, and that's that. One song, you have one song, and they play it one time, and that's it. Boom, boom, boom. They wash their hands with you. I'm not trying to be that, man. My month, If I spend $2,500, I can guarantee you I'm getting the most out of that $2,500. I'm not going to give you $2,500 and y'all play my shit one time on, on, on the local radio station. That's, that's, that don't make sense to me because this is a mo game. If you're going to do that, you might as well spend that $2,500 on some, a commercial. You know what I'm saying? Spend that $2,500 on commercial and play your music in the background. You know what I'm saying? Because... That one spin, you don't know when it's coming on. You don't know how, you know what I'm saying? It might be in a mix. You don't know how long they're going to play it. You don't know none of that. So I, I'm just, I'm, I, I was juggling with that. And I was like, hey, man, I got to do that song. And I also strategically put it as the second song on my, on my CD. Because we, we have a formula for our CD. I don't know if I want to share it with everybody just yet, but maybe I will. <laughs> so in the beginning, so... Our intros have to be funky, super duper funky. That's 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 number one. Secondly, the second song had to have had to be energetic, and you had to be rapping your ass off. Third is always about third and fourth is always like the single that we're trying to push for. You know what I'm saying? Third and fourth, fifth you can kind of go either way. You could do you could do a, like a girl song, you could do a strip club song, you could do. Like that's that's like our formula. Then we go all the way down to the end song. It got to be funky again, which is the outro. You know what I'm saying? So I we kind of all if you listen to any of our CDs, we kind of always go with with that formula. You know what I'm saying? So this time, I, I did it again. You know what I'm saying? Number three was out was uh was the video that I'm that I'm promoting, which is 100k a day, and then the next song after that is the song about my wife. So like I'm really following the formula to this. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like that formula works. Because the thing of it is, people's um, people's attention span is so short. So you have to get right to it about the, the, the message that you're trying to convey in each song. You know what I'm saying? But I don't want to rap no more. I really wanted that to be a single at first. But my my uh, my videographer, which is I Rise Films, he was like, nah, we're going to go with 100K a day. I think we can, we, can, we can be fly. We can do all the stuff that everybody think they want to see. You know what I'm saying? Without without being uh fraud or fake or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's the only reason we went with 100 k a day, because 
usually we would have went with I don't want to rap no more. You know what I'm saying? We would have went with something like that because we that's our, you know what I'm saying? That's the formula. So yeah. but uh yeah, I don't want to rap no more was that probably was my the hardest song that I had to write um on this CD though. Mm, man. Yep. Mm hmm Yeah. Um and I could see the reason why he would um say a hundred K a day, right? Yeah. But uh because this song is a, a niche song, right? Yeah, like it's yeah, for it people who are in the industry and we get it. Uh at the same time, I I I I'd like a video to it, you know. Uh, I don't know what I, um, <laughs> who's, what kind of poll I need to fill out or whatever in order to make that happen. <laughs> but even if you do it on your iPhone, like, just, it's so many people who um, are in that boat right now for many different reasons, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, when you wrote that song, you had your instance of where you were at and your reasons for it, but it's people who are signed to whole record labels and yeah. they can't put out what they want to. And they're like, ah, I don't really want to rap no more. Like, you <laughs> yeah. know, like it's different people at different points in this industry who, uh, who would really get it. So, um, you know, if there is, any money in the budget for like a small little you know snippet <laughs> if, like you put it at just it's a few seconds at the beginning of another video i just want to see what you're going to do to it but you know hey that's just um, <laughs> yeah but, so, uh with that said um you, the other people who you've been in the industry with all of y'all have probably experienced some of this same frustration on a lot of different levels together. Um, and I'm sure that it's helped build community for you because you have people around you who support uh, yeah. what you do automatically and y'all are coming out together. But um, you mentioned a little bit earlier on about some of the frustrations that you have with the industry where at what point do you feel like that started for you my frustration with the industry um uh, well like i said my my dad has been in the industry for five six decades you know what i'm saying so it really started from him actually you know what i'm saying so i he he's had a few songs on on the radio and everything like that too. So I've 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 seen his frustration firsthand in the way that things get dealt with and stuff like that. So I always had kind of like a chip on my shoulder about music because I I see every day the talentless uh, progress while the most talented people uh, fall by the wayside, and it's not always. Uh, the universe's fault. Sometimes it's the artist. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it is the artist. Sometimes we think that we are so talented that we don't have to do certain shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, who who exempts you from doing certain things if the masses don't know you yet? That's that's the thing about being so talented when it comes to certain things. People are like, ah, oh, man, I can just chill. I, I put this shit out you know, a couple couple months later, man. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll love me. But what, what we fail to realize is that people's attention spans are short. And in the age of the internet, from day to day, people people interest is shifting every day. Oh, Brianna Taylor. Oh, uh, uh, Corona. Uh, 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 the dude uh, that shot the girl in the toe. Uh, all that. You know what I'm saying? Like people are all being swayed different directions every day. So that's where you have a lot of these rappers. They have to be goofballs and clowns to to keep your attention. You know what I'm saying? Like if you see the most popular rappers on Instagram right now, if you see, you, you can see what they have to do to keep people's attention. It's almost sickening to me, in my opinion. 
You know, I like to laugh. I'm, I, I'm a fun person. I like to laugh all the time. But where's your music, bro? Where's your music? You know what I'm saying? Your music is trash and you're, you're funny as hell. You know what I'm saying? But I, I need some. Give me some music so I can listen. Cause I don't. I don't want you. I don't want to see you throwing throwing your money or somebody else's money in the sky with broads and all that. That's cool, bro. But leave that for the video. You know what I'm saying? That's cool because at the end of the day, these kids is watching you, and all they want to do is be just like you. So if all they see is that, that's all they want to be. Knowing damn well that if you're a rapper, you making money, especially right now in the pandemic, you smart as hell. So let them see that you're smart. It's one artist, I forgot the guy name, NLE Chopper. He done changed his whole little way that he doing things. I don't know if it's a publicity stuff. I don't care what it is, but he has followers looking at him. That's all I care about. And if, if, if all the young artists start doing stuff like him, man, the, 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 the bosses at the top, man, y'all in trouble because this is what y'all trying to keep us from. Y'all want us to kill each other. Y'all want us to be violent. Y'all want us to spend our money with y'all and not with us. You know what I'm saying? It's just think, since this pandemic been going on, just think, just see how much Black-owned businesses is, is doing, how, how much better they're doing than just six months ago. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's, that's, that's a trip to me. Like I say, I don't want to get too deep with you, Rocket, but I'm, I'm just showing you, like, the, the inner workings of me so you'll know why did I come up with certain songs at this time. You know what I'm saying? Because this CD was really just like a journal for me at, at this time. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't ever want to say the word pandemic, corona, I didn't want to say none of that, but I wanted it to be like a, a reflection of the times. Just like the same thing I do with any of my music. I'm from Houston, born and raised in Houston, never probably gonna go anywhere else in, in life as far as staying. But you're not gonna hear me say uh, the, that, that, the, the normal Houston stuff. You're gonna hear it in my slang all the time. You're gonna hear it in, my, uh, in, in the way that I talk, the way that I um, rhyme my words. I can rhyme dine with a rhyme. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, a lot of people can't do that. You know what I'm saying? If you're not from Texas, you can't do that. We, ha we, we got a whole dictionary of words that can rhyme that really don't even rhyme. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I, I, I'm i just, I'm really just here to uh, to share some light, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, also, we do, uh, we do a, we do a uh, Christmas toy drive right here at Yellowstone Park every year. You know what I'm saying? This is going to be our fourth year doing it. So, like I say, I just want to, I really want to be a pillar in my community before I leave. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm from the community. I always been. You know what I'm saying? I didn't move around and all that, but, and, and that just make me see things for really what they are. Like, my neighborhood is poor. We poor over here. You know what I'm saying? So, any bright light that a child may see, they're going to go towards that light. So, all the children got to see right now is rappers, drug dealers, and athletes. That's who they look up to. So I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get them somebody else to look up to because I, I don't consider myself none of those. You know what I'm saying? I consider myself a, 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 a entrepreneur and a philanthropist. You know what I'm saying? Because that's that's like, like I say, my net my little nephew just peeked in right now. Like they looking up to me. They looking up to us. At, you know what I'm saying? Regardless, whatever you're doing, if you're doing right or wrong, they still looking up to you. You know what I'm saying? So, and actually that was so I got twin nephews. That was actually both of them on the beginning and the end of the song. It was one of them in the beginning really? and one of them at the end, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, when you were talking right there that uh, people have short attention spans and I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. Um, and I, I have a confession to make during this uh during this uh this taping right here right mm -hmm. i was a, a commercial music holic because uh i grew up as a jehovah's witness <laughs> okay okay and so my introduction to hip-hop was the radio um, I didn't live in a neighborhood where hip hop was easily accessible and, and rappers weren't either. So yeah. a lot of my, uh, my rap music came from the radio. Yeah. Uh, my brother on the other hand, who's like only two years younger than me, he was on Napster downloading everything for free and yeah. following rabbit trails and all <clears> that, but that wasn't me. Um, and it wasn't until wow, 
I have to say that uh, probably before I started working with E, um, that I really started taking in this underground music and really understanding what that meant, um, what it means to support an independent artist. So with that said, um, I want to ask you, well, first of all, who are some of your favorite independent music artists uh, that people can look up? I know you mentioned Dante Higgins. Most definitely. Um, Dante Higgins, uh, two of my favorite, favorite artists that we're not directly linked to is uh, Rob Galat and Show Lewis. Uh, I, I, and my boys, um, I ain't going to say too many names because I, cause even if I like their rap, I might not like them. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, so mm. like them, them That's two guys, real. yeah, them two guys, I, I can say, well, Dante Higgins and them two, I really cut for them. You know what I'm saying? Um, but some of my influence, did you say influence, right? Yeah, let's do influence too. Okay. On, Inf uh, independent artists. Influence, man, the whole screwed up click, the whole click. I was influenced by them, you know what I'm saying? So I'm from Yellowstone, uh, same hood as, as Big Pokey, Big Mo, you know what I'm saying? So, and what's crazy is that my mom and Big Mo mom, they grew up together. So, like, he was like my big brother, you know what I'm saying? He was like, he was like, like real family, you know what I'm saying? Like, right when we start thinking that we was going to be real rappers, he died. Like, I talked to him, you're like, yeah, man, whatever y'all need, I, 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 put, uh, I, I put some vocals on it, man, whenever y'all need. And like a week later, he was gone. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Pimp C, uh, UGK, they ain't really independent, but um, they started Nip off that way. They yeah. started off independent. Nipsey, you know what I'm saying? I, I love Nipsey. Um, I I love Nipsey for more than one reason, though, because I feel like I am Nipsey. You know what I'm saying? He he was trying to do what I'm trying to do in my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Like build something for my neighborhood by my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 basically what I want to do. And he and when he died, it kind of hit me a little different, even though I didn't know him and nothing like that. It just hit me like, how y'all gonna let this man get murdered in his hood and he doing for y'all? You know what I'm saying? Like y'all gotta protect stuff like that, man, by any means. You know what I'm saying? Like Cause it, it just made me feel like, damn, if he can get touched in his own hood, I ain't shit then. You know what I'm saying? Because he was doing it all for his hood. He was actually putting niggas on on in his neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Put a whole store out there and and made it a uh, a hot spot for tourists. You know what I'm saying? Like when everybody went to LA, they wanted to go to the marathon store. That's how I wanted to be with us. When everybody come to Houston, y'all need to come down to Yellowstone to see what what them boys got going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we the turkey leg hood or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I, that's what I had in mind. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, independent wise, that's it. Now nationwide, you know, I was, I, I'm a screw head. I was, I was, I was raised on screw. All my cousins and brothers, they older than me. We used to steal their screw tapes and we was listening to all the, all the, who, whoever screw was listening to, that's who I wanted to listen to. Above the law, Sebo, you know what I'm saying? E-40. You know what I'm saying? I really didn't really get into Jay-Z and Biggie until after Screw died, really, because I was starting to rap a little bit more, and Screw, he, he was putting, you know, they newer stuff was on there. Screw died in, like, 2000, so uh, Biggie, his last CD was in, what, 98, and that was uh, Life After Death. I think he had he had Notorious Thugs on there. And I, I can go on and on and on, but Jay-Z, uh, Jay-Z, Biggie, Nas, Pac, um, Kendrick, I like Drake. I like Drake too. You know what I'm saying? Drake, he just a he just a bopper. He ain't got no. He like a chameleon. You know what I'm saying? He just like a chameleon. He can make he can make good records for every every uh, region. You know what I'm saying? He can be hyphy. He can be. You know what I'm saying? But and and that's another thing. I'm kind of upset with the industry that we have allowed everyone to take our style and we don't even want it no more. You know what I'm saying? We letting everybody take our style and we want Atlanta style. All, all niggas from Houston sound like they from Atlanta now. I'm like, bro, have you even been to Atlanta? You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even, like, don't do that because you thinking that you gonna get on by doing something that these niggas doing and you still not getting on. 
Like, just do you. If you rap about swingers and, 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 and serve all day, hey, man, that's what Lil Wayne them was rapping about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the, the, the main people that's rapping, they rapping about what we live every day. So just be you. You don't have to. I, I feel like that's another thing that I felt I don't want to rap no more. Because everybody, everybody wants to be future. Everybody wants to be young thug. Everybody wants to be, you know what I'm saying? The, the most populist, pop, that's not a word, popularist <laughs> rapper. I don't care. I don't care popularist. about that. We're, we're making it work. We are making yeah, yeah, it yeah, work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody wants to be the most popular. I, I care I care nothing about that. You know what I'm saying? And it's not even about money with me because, all right, say for instance, I say 100,000 streams. I'm probably getting like four, three, four hundred dollars off that. You know what I'm saying? How can I how can I provide my family with that? You know what I'm saying? So I look at like rap right now, to me, is like golf. You know what I'm saying? It's something that I do that relaxes me and gets my mind off of uh, everyday things and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But I, I ain't really, I'm not, I can't, I can't sit up here and tell you, yeah, I'm trying to get us on and this and that because I know, I, I do know what it takes for, for you to have to get on. And, and it's going to be, it's, first of all, the number one thing you're going to need is a bag. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't care about if you jamming or if you got a fan base. They, they want to say, hey, do you have ten thousand dollars that can go towards something that we need to go toward? And, and, and now I don't have ten thousand dollars that that can just go for rap right now. I got you know what I'm saying. I got money that that can that can that can be that can be made some sound investments out of. You know what I'm saying? But honestly, I don't think rap is a sound investment right now. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just the the, the honest to God truth, in my opinion. That's why I say I don't want to rap no more. But in my free time, I will rap. You know what I'm saying? But I, I got to get some money. I got a family that's depending on me. And unless uh, they give me a check today and say, hey, man, we want you to stop doing everything else you're doing. I'm going to give you a million dollar check. And maybe then I would be like, okay, well, shit, I'm, I'm going to be a full-time rapper then. But until then, man, I, I, I have to be an octopus. I have to have my hands in more than one thing, you know what I'm saying, as an entrepreneur, especially right now during the pandemic because, uh, you know, jobs is not as available, you know, and, and uh, just to be honest, I don't really want a job to be working for anyone. I would rather be an entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? And do you, you know, it's funny that you say that because that was actually going to be my next question for you. So yeah. seeing as you've been in the industry for a minute, um, you love Nipsey Hussle. I love Nipsey Hussle too. Um, and do you think that the future of it being an independent artist looks like um, having multiple streams of income? And yeah. um, how do you yourself balance that? Um, first of all, you only, there's only one answer to being able to balance anything, and that's with God. You know what I'm saying? With, with God, anything is possible. And and I I feel like, I, I think I said on the outro of my CD, like, I feel like I I get on God's nerves sometimes because I, I talk to him a lot. Like, I, I sometimes I feel like too much. I'm like, I'm praying, hold on, God, I got one more thing. I got one more thing. Hold on, just listen to me. Like, that's how I am. Like, um, so I, I do think it's going to be more entrepreneurs with this because of people like Nipsey Hussle, because of people like Diddy, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's always doing more than just one thing. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to do more than one thing because first of all, say as you sign a deal, nine times out of 10, the deal is going to be a 360 deal now because they can't really make no money off of record sales. So they need to get as much as they can from you, however they can. And which is, listen, listen and people don't talk to these 360s, Y'all don't know. If you don't, if you never had that deal, you can't never say nothing about it. Drake first deal was a 360 deal. So if you getting a hundred thousand a show and you got to split it three ways, you still make it thirty thousand dollars a show. And if you're doing 30 shows in a month, just do the math. You know what I'm saying? Like you gonna have to you gonna have to pay. Regardless. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna either pay at your pocket or the company pocket, or you're gonna pay with your life, regardless. You still gonna have to pay. You know what I'm saying? So you know, artists, y'all don't be tripping about those 360 deals, man. Get a deal. Just get a deal. Just the, the the more you have to offer, the better your deal can be. 
You know what I'm saying? Say for instance, if we get signed right now, I'm going to tell them, look, I got my own publishing. I got my own producers. I got my own t-shirt facility. I have my own studio. What can you do for me? So now my price is just raised. It might be a hundred thousand and it raised up 500,000 now. You know what I'm saying? So it's all about what you have ownership of. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you have ownership, you can put your foot down and say, Hey, Nah, I don't want this. I don't want that. But if you got your hand out, that's the only thing you got. You got to go for what they telling you until you can do more. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, a lot of people get complacent or not even just complacent. They just get stuck on the back burner. You know what I'm saying? Because they not what the record company wanted at that time. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, a, it's just like, a, like when the Rockets, when they have a, a nice player. I think they had Montreal Harrell. They traded him for Chris Powell and all that, but when Montreal Harrell went to the Clippers, now he's the sixth man of the year. You know what I'm saying? But with the Rockets, he was the fucking 13th man, 14th man, never came off the bench, barely. You know what I'm saying? So you, you, once people see your worth, you got to add tax to that, point blank period. You know what I'm saying? So uh, you, you definitely have to, I would definitely um, advise everyone to be doing more than one thing. You know what I'm saying? Even if you got a job, even if you just got a job. My aunt was working for this top, top company for about 12 years. And uh, in business, they say once, if you want to, if you want to uh, make room to, to have more capital, the first thing you do is delete as much overhead as you can. And what's the highest overhead in the business? The employee payroll. You feel what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, my Amy, she 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 worked every day, went to went to work every day, dressed how she's supposed to dress, did everything she was supposed to do. But since she had been working there for so long and getting paid so much, they like, okay, man, we finna let her go and let this 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 youngster come in, and we gonna pay them uh, less than half of what she was getting paid. You know what I'm saying? And she crying and all that shit. I'm like, Amy. You shouldn't have, you should have been doing more than just this. You know what I'm saying? She had four one Ks and all like a bunch of money from this shit. You know what I'm saying? So you have to have you have to be an octopus. You have to all that man. Uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Please don't. Please don't put all your eggs in one basket. Spread them baskets and them eggs around because you never know which one's gonna hatch first. You know what I'm saying? I just made that up, by the way. That was I, I didn't. Man, I didn't, uh, <laughs> you were yeah, a whole bunch of bars, whole on, bunch man. of bars. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on now. So, what does the future look like for you? Since you don't really want to rap no more, <laughs> what does the future look like for you after this album? The future for me after this album, um, my partner Adam Bowman is gonna do a solo album. Uh, we basically we 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 putting everything still under under gravity umbrella, but we just basically uh, just getting raps off, man. Just building the catalog. So so when when and if a label do come, they can say, oh well, damn, y'all done done. Because if he do his album, and we already have another under gravity album done already. So if he does his album, and it's done before Christmas, the beginning of the year we coming with. Our new, our new project. So basically, I just want to do what all the successful artists is doing right now, which is just feeding the, the audience content. I just want to keep feeding content. And then also, uh, our producers, our two producers, our main two producers, they just made a, uh, what they call a beat tape full of instrumentals. You know what I'm saying? Just a beat, a, a tape, a CD full of instrumentals. And uh, everybody's liking it. So what we're going to do, we're going to keep, keep those volumes going. Um, basically, just, like I said, just building our catalog. So when and if a record label does come, you know we'll we'll be ready for that too. And and another thing, just have your business straight. I want to have my business all the way straight. You know what I'm saying? Before anything happens, because say for instance, someone try to sign us right now, it's certain things that I have to get done before I can write that write my name on that on that piece of paper. You know what I'm saying? To to cover our tracks, cover our ass. You know what I'm saying? Because I went to school for this. I know like. When you put that name on there, you, you, it, it ain't too much that you can do after that. You know what I'm saying? So you have to make sure all your shit is taken care of. You know, um, another thing is with the pandemic and everything, we just have to be more creative. 
you know, we've done a, my, I did a, a virtual concert for my dad. Uh, same thing, same setup over here at the studio. We had some big lights flashing and stuff like that, but we just had to be creative. We don't have all the money, but we can, we have enough space to create. You know what I'm saying? So I, I want to be more creative this, this next year coming around. And uh, like I say, just, just keep, keep giving you content. I want to, I want to bring out some artists. I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of writing. You know what I'm saying? Some music, I don't even see myself being able to perform but I can see someone else being able to perform it. So that's going to be another thing too. I'm going to get more into writing for others. You know what I'm saying? I said that I'm, I'm, I don't want to rap no more too. I say I might just ghost write, fuck rap, or however I said it. But I, that, that's how I'm feeling because um, I can write the little, I can write the ratchet shit. You know what I'm saying? I can write whatever y'all want me to write, but not necessarily, it's not necessarily for me to perform that. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I would rather write than perform. I really don't want to perform. I don't really like performing because I know how I, how I am when I'm in the audience. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I don't know you, I got the, I got the meme mug on, I got my hands crossed, I'm looking you up and down. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it is. So I know they doing the same thing to me. And I ain't friendly like that. So if I get the wrong, I might just jump off the, uh, <laughs> off the platform. You know what I'm saying? So that's the thing. And also, being a rapper, and being from the hood, it's like, you kind of paranoid. The motherfucker I always know where you at, or know everywhere where you not at home. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of, kind of, it's kind of, I'm in between that, like, damn, okay, I, we do this show over here, I gotta post the damn show where we gonna be at, eight o'clock to 12 o'clock. So now a person know, okay, this nigga here ain't gonna be home from eight to 12. You know what I'm saying? So now <laughs> I gotta have some insurance, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm an I'm a overanalyzer. So I think about stuff like this. I always been, ask my mama. If my mama came here right now, she would say, when he was four years old, he opened up one of our bills and asked us how we was going to pay for it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, that's wow. what I, I did you that did when that? I was four years old. Yes, I did. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So um, I am an overanalyzer, man. I, I overanalyze everything. I'm, I'm overly ambitious when it comes to certain things. I'm lazy as well, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I feel like um, I, I work well under pressure. So, so, so sometimes I do wait till the midnight hour to do get things done and stuff like that. And it comes up, you know, perfect. But um, in the future, my, what I really, really, really want to do is I want to, I want to get a warehouse and I want to, uh, I want kids to come to the warehouse and I want them to learn how to do all of the media things as far as uh, videography, filming, uh, mixing and mastering, even learn how to DJ, uh, being behind the camera as well as in front of the camera. I want to teach kids this. See, we had these type of after school programs when we was growing up, but that shit is gone. You know what I'm saying? That shit is gone. So guess what? All they want to be, whatever they see on the internet. You know what I'm saying? So I want to show these kids that, all right, bro, you don't have to be the rapper to be making rapper money. You know what I'm saying? You, you can mix and master this rapper's music and make as much as he going to make, or maybe even more. You know, the dude Guru that, that uh, mix and master all JC, Jay-Z stuff, he makes a million dollars a year. You know what I'm saying? Like, like why? I would, I would do that. Shit, if I'm just mixing and mastering Jay-Z, okay, that's fine, I'll do that. The, the person that does videography for BET, MTV, these people make six figures a year. You know what I'm saying? Way more than your average rapper intakes. You know what I'm saying? So I just want them to see, like, bro, you don't have to be what they say you have to be. You know what I'm saying? You can be whatever you want to be. You can be a doctor. You can be a lawyer. You can be all of that. But always remember that you want to have some type of ownership with this. Because at the end of the day, that practice that you that you with, with those doctors, they can go down. They can go under today. So you, you need to be learning from them so you can have your own practice one day. You know what I'm saying? Like you, my, my, my whole thing is ownership. Own your shit, man. Don't be a slave. You know what I'm saying? Like working a job, that shit cool, but I always know that these motherfuckers can get rid of me any day, anytime, for anything. You know what I'm saying? Like you cannot do nothing wrong. Like, man, I had a job. I had this bullshit job that I had. I was probably getting like, what? $14 an hour. This was fresh out of college. 
And uh, they just walked the whole team in there. They were like, hey, we're going to have to let y'all go. And everybody was like, oh, look, no, man, look. I'm like, okay, bet. What, what's up with the unemployment? You know what I'm saying? Like, how, when, when, I, when, when can I get that? Because I'm going finna, I'm finna to use that unemployment, and I'm going to flip that shit some kind of way. I don't care about what people care what what people care the most about. I care less about. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I that's how I'm raising my kids. That's how I keep in tune with my my family and my uh, coworker, my coworker, my partners. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's what we talk about all the time because I I, I don't know if I could work on a job for 10, 12, 20 years and not have a stake in the company. You know what I'm saying? Like. It, like what? Okay, you gave me a four hundred one k, but guess what? When a pandemic come, the four hundred one k shot down. Like you don't even have all that four hundred one k right now. If 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 you didn't uh, retire before the pandemic came, now you gotta wait until times get better. If times get better, you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's too much uh, unsurety when it comes to jobs, whether people know it or not. They think that's the most stable thing, but. It's, that's one of the most unstable things that you can do. You know what I'm saying? Unless you are what they call essential. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're essential, your job is the most unstable thing you have in your life. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're in Houston and you're doing health care, you're doing uh, food. Uh, you know, it's, it's only like three, three or four industries in Houston that you can I always have work. A construction worker, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So... Well, um, actually... Hold on, I can't yeah, actually, even if you are essential, uh, that's probably the one of the one of the most unstable jobs, and you know, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> they'll let you go way quicker than any other job will. You just exactly. have to find another essential job. You always exactly. have a job, exactly uh, to get. But um, so before we start wrapping up, I just wanted to ask you. What is, uh, well, you dropped so many gems during this, but what is something um, that you want independent artists and or professionals to know? You say what I want them to know what? You, it kind of broke up. about this industry out here but what what words of advice would you be able to give a music artist and or music industry professional what words of, of wisdom can you leave them with today uh man be yourself man be yourself um don't do nothing for no one I always when i say that when you're doing something you do it because it's something that you want to do. Don't don't do it because you think it's gonna give you a certain result. Result because that's 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 an uncontrolled variable. You know what I'm saying? Uh, stop capping. Stop uh, stop portraying that you are the best and you don't need any help or you are you are um, what's the word? Don't 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 put it out there like you. You are right. like the yeah. Don't put that front out there, man. Because once you get once you get exposed, it's a wrap. It's a wrap, man. Your your career is over. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you claim to be from the streets and all that, man. It's a wrap. Like people people take their street shit serious, man. People die with this shit every day, man. It's people on these on this block right now. Like two days ago, like niggas getting murdered, man. Every day. So, you know, just, just, if you a square man, stay in a square place. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't, I don't say that I'm a, a gangster rapper. I'm just a realist rapper. I'm a regular rapper. I'm a, I'm, I'm a rapper for your average person. You know what I'm saying? That might have a little gangster in them. That might have some family members that's gangsters and all that. But man, I went to school. I made straight A's. You know what I'm saying? Smoke with some weed, shit like that. Like regular people shit. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't went through my ups and downs, but as 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 far as like living life, I would consider myself like uh 
like like Trey in Boys in the Hood. Like not like uh, he he was kind of square to me, but I'm just saying he wasn't into everything that the people that was around him was into. That's that's what I mean. I'm like him. I, I'm not swinging in the air, no shit like that, because a uh, cop pulled me over and shit like that. But I'm saying, <laughs> I, um, I, 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 I wasn't in the streets like that. You know what I'm saying? People will tell you, like, yeah, man, Mac did his thing, but he wasn't just in the streets like that. Like, they'll tell you that. You know what I'm saying? But this the thing. People really know you. You know what I'm saying? So don't be doing too much to where people pull your card and you like, Oh nah, what I really meant was, bro, uh man, nah, my, my boy used to be doing that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really nah, now you looking weak, bro, and I'm not ever buying your album again. Like when I'm when I'm I'm a consumer of music as well. So what I'm looking for in a rapper is the truth. You know what I'm saying? I want your truth. Whatever your truth is, man. Like DMX. DMX truth, that nigga say, man, you either know me for rapping or you know me for robbing. And that's it's nothing. To, that's nothing to be proud of. But he's just saying, like, you gonna know me one one or the other. You know what I'm saying? So, like, in our generation when we was growing up, it was a lot more of that. Like, you could pull these niggas. You could pull a big pokey card and say, oh yeah, nah, that nigga big pokey. He, he everything he talking about, he did. Oh, big, you know what I'm saying? Like right now, bro. If you pull people card, you gonna be like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> Point Dexter, no, nah, bro. What? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? These niggas had these niggas sex offenders and all type of shit going on. And like, bro, you talking about bitches, but you was really trying to have sex with good kids. Like, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So, bro, just be, just be you. Just be you. Just that's all that's all I want people to do is be you and invest, invest your money smartly. You know what I'm saying? Uh it's it's cool to buy jewelry if you buy real jewelry. You know what I'm saying? Because jewelry is is uh appreci it appreciates, you know what I'm saying? So gold and guns appreciate. You know what I'm saying? Cars, houses, and all that shit depreciates. So if you if it's something that you can't add add if it doesn't add value to your life, leave it alone. Don't even deal with it. I'm talking that goes for women, boy, men, all of that. Anything that doesn't add value to your life, it should not exist in your life. Point blank period. You know what I'm saying? And that goes, that's just not for rappers. That's just for you too. You're not a rapper, but I'm just saying, whatever is not helping you get to that next level, man, it needs to not be on, on your mind or in your thoughts at all. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's really the, the, the best advice I can give rappers, man. It just, and, and, and don't look for that, that get rich quick scheme. You know what I'm saying? 97.9 hit you, say, uh, we, uh, send, us, send us $100 and we gonna do something. Nah, bro. Nah, I don't. I don't. I ain't going for that. I take. I take that long road. You know what I'm saying? Give me that long road because that's the road that I paid for myself. You know what I'm saying? I take that because I want to feel them bumps and bruises so I know when I when I get that clear that that all the way clear road. I'm like, damn, this for all them days my shit was bumpy. You know what I'm saying? And you, that's that's why that's why niggas like us don't win a lottery. You know what I'm saying? Because shit. Most people that win the lottery ain't never been through shit. That's why I be gone. Have you heard the stories about people that win the lottery and how they die or go bankrupt in the, in the first year or two? Because I don't know why, but I guess God gives the money to the people that, that say, oh, man, when I get this money, I'm going to do that. And knowing damn well, you're going to go crazy. You know what I'm saying? A nigga like me win the lottery, if I win the lottery, they'll try to kill me because this whole, my whole neighborhood be different some kind of way. You know what I'm saying? Like, you would know that somebody in this motherfucker got some money because everything will be different, man. The school's gonna be better. The the book's gonna be better. You know what I'm saying? Like, I went over to the school across the street a couple months ago before the pandemic just to holler at some of my old teachers. Man, some of these books had dust on them. That You know what I'm saying? Like, they was just so beat up and just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't think that the kids would I don't know if kids understand, like, I don't know if they understand what's going on. So I, I really want to help them to understand what's going on because there's a lot of stuff going on up under our noses, right in front of our eyes that we can do something about, just like with the voting situation. Okay, you don't like the person that's in the, in the office, but did you vote, fam? Did you vote? Did you vote against him? Because if you didn't, you gave him the damn, the, the, you gave him your vote now. 
You know what I'm saying? Your elected officials that you upset about in Houston, did you vote against them? Did you vote against these policies and these, uh, 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 these whatever they doing, these, uh, what they call it? For the, for the city and all that. Are you voting for that stuff? You know what I'm saying? Are you voting for these propositions? If you're not, bro, shut up, bro. You have no say-so. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course they're going to say, man, my vote don't count. I did vote this one time. Bro, keep voting. Just keep voting. It's going it, it's, it's, it's to, a, it's, a, it's a pot of gold at the end of every rainbow. Facts. You know what I'm saying? But that rainbow might be 10, 20 years down the line, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, wow. so that, Wow, Meg. <laughs> yeah, you know, real. Beautiful. Oh, my God. Wow. Well, yeah. um, thank you so much <laughs> for every gem that you drop on this oh, yeah. show. Thank, thank you, you for investing your time. Thank you for continuing despite the fact that this music industry hasn't given as much to you as you've given to it. Yeah. You are still here um, and you're still pushing and you're still fighting for other independent artists, even if it is like, like even if you're done with it, you're still here fighting for other people. And oh yeah difference in that way so i want to say thank you if you don't hear it from anyone else because mm. i know it's a rocky road yeah, and it is. um you know i know that there's ups and downs that come along with it but you're still here and i love the album so thank you thank you thank you check out Mac under gravity. Can you let everyone know your your handles for social okay. media how to okay. find your album. Okay. Um, to find the album, all you got to do is go on any platform and just type in M-A-C, Mastermind After Cash is the album title. So it's M.A.C. is the name. And the title is Mastermind After Cash. That's on all platforms. If you want to see me on Instagram, I'm M-A-C-U-N-D-R-G-R-A-V-I-T-Y. So that's Mac Under Gravity without the E. And uh, on Facebook, I'm Mac Under Gravity with the E. So on Instagram, they didn't let me put the E because it was too long and shit like that. But uh, yeah, or you could just you can pull up on Yellowstone, man. I'm here. I ain't, I'm, I'm, I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? I'm still here. You can pull up on Yellowstone and Scott. I'm still here. You know, I'm, I'm selling CDs out the trunk just like the 90s. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm still yes. out here. Yes. Well, thank you so much. And I want to say thank all of you for joining us today. Please download Crowded Streaming. And I was going to say, it's not on all platforms yet because we got to get it on Crowded Streaming's platform. Okay. Uh, but download Crowded Streaming it for independent music artists, guys. They uh, need your continuous support. They need you to continuously support them. And if you like a music artist, support them on all platforms. Don't just support them on one. Give them one stream, one view, whatever you can do uh, yeah. to help make a difference in this industry. They need you. So thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you. Tune in for tune in next time to the Rocky Road. Thank you so much, Mac Under Gravity. This was great. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise. Yes, ma'am. Catch you later. <laughs>